What's up everybody? Today I want to talk about reverse engineering processes. Today I want to talk about how you can go about looking at the behavior of processes that you don't even have the source code for. And I want to show you a couple of tools that can help you do that. Specifically the tools I want to talk about today are strace and ltrace. This video is going to focus on Linux, but there are similar tools for Mac OS and for Windows. These tools allow us to take a program, maybe a program that we wrote, maybe it's a program that we didn't write, maybe it's a program that we don't even have the source code for, and actually look at how it behaves when it runs. And this is to look at the system calls that it makes and the library calls that it makes. What's the difference between a system call and a library call? So a system call is when a process requests something from the operating system. The operating system doesn't allow processes to do whatever they want with the hardware, and so there are times when processes want to do something, like write to the screen or write to disk or send something over the network, and the process has to make a request to the operating system saying, hey, operating system, will you please write this to the screen or write a, open a file for me or do something or tell me what time it is. All of these are things that the process can't do for itself. And so it requires a system call. And now in Linux, you can just type in man syscalls and you can go through and you can see the, the list of all the different Linux syscalls that are available. So this gives you a sense of what the kernel's system calls are. These are basically the different things that can be requested by processes. So library calls are calls that the process makes into an existing library. Now this might be the C standard library or libc as we call it. And a library call might call system calls, but a library call doesn't necessarily require us to switch into the kernel. Okay, a library call could just keep the processor in user mode. Let's look at how this works. Again, let's start with hello world. Hello world's a nice example. So I'm gonna compile it and then I'm going to simply, I wanna look at the system calls that it makes. And so I'm going to simply type strace and the name of my program. And wow, there are a lot of system calls. All it did was call printf. And we can see that down at the bottom, there's this write hello world down here at the bottom. But what are all these other calls up here above? On one hand, you might look at this and say, yeah, printf is really complicated, but we can come out that printf out. And now all we have is an empty main. Now we have a program that literally doesn't do anything. And when we run it, we still see most of these system calls. So what's going on? So what you're seeing here is a lot of the setup that libc is doing before main is ever called. You may think main is when the program actually starts running. Main's not. There's a lot of stuff that gets started up. If you look closely at some of these calls, it's doing things like setting up the memory for the stack. It's actually loading the C standard library. It's doing a lot of stuff to just set up your program so that it's going to run in the way that we're used to see programs running. And just to demonstrate this, I want to show you another program. So this is the assembly version of my Hello World. This program just does one thing. It makes a system call and, it, and that system call is the right system call. That's the same system call that printf is using. It's basically just saying, please write hello world to the screen. And so we're going to compile this a little differently. You notice I don't have a main here, so I'm actually going to compile without the C standard library. But now when I run this program through strace, the output's a whole lot simpler. It's not doing any of that setup stuff it was doing before. It's really just printing out to the screen. So yeah, I'm not trying to scare you by throwing assembly around on here. It's just to show you that there is a lot of other stuff that's going on in your programs that often we're not even aware of. Now let's try running the same programs under ltrace. And now with ltrace, you actually see the library calls. And you can tell the difference here because printf is actually not a syscall. Printf is a library call. And so with ltrace, you can actually see when printf was called. It tells us, oh yeah, this, this is how printf was called. Here are the arguments that were passed to it. If we run it with strace, it shows us the system calls, basically the requests to the kernel that were made. And so this instead of printf, you're going to see write. And write is the syscall that the printf library call actually made into the operating system. So folks, that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to take some time to make sure you're aware of ltrace and strace, which are two really cool tools that you can use to actually inspect programs that you may not even have the source code for. If you're on Mac OS, you want to look at dtrace, or there's a program called dtrust, which uses dtrace in very similar ways to strace. And if you're on Windows, I know you have options, but I don't have much experience with those options. And so I leave you and Google to figure that one out. But anyway, folks, this is where I leave you. strace and ltrace, they're useful tools. And until next time, have a great day and I'll see you later.